city It's hard enough And when you hit them things stick Got the bus it out, yeah You never even heard of one such I never seen no one such Until you live on the run But you can't see the way the bullets come Though some will, some won't Some get it, some don't Ain't no sympathy for the wicked needs Me a temple beat like what? Legs in the air laid out like a dead rope to the bunk Trying to ride in on the coat Should've never hit the bad note I feel the image of a broken tree As I scuff your brains through the red stroke And the people wouldn't even care They saw you once and then no more So we wouldn't even hit a click Cause it was already dropped If you would have made you get voted up Come it up and toast Cause life in the city is hard enough And when I got a little bit, so what? I'ma take it out, yeah When life in the city is hard enough And when you got a little bit, so what? Wanna take it out, yeah Enough, and when you hit a face kick, about to bust it out, yeah. Life in the city is hard enough, and when you got a little bit, so what? Wanna take it out, yeah. Life in the city is hard enough, and when you hit a face kick, about to bust it out, yeah. You're listening to the Doug Stewart Show, the realest, truest sports and guy talk show in America on this Man Talk Monday. Happy Juneteenth to you. Go out there and drink a beer, man. Celebrate. Uh, the Atlanta Braves' Brandon Phillips, man, been hot as fish grease lately, man, with a second straight game-winning hit for the Bravos. Uh, Phillips punched a ninth inning single through a uh, stacked infield to drive in uh, uh, Johan Camago uh, from third base and give the Atlanta Braves a 5-4 win over the Miami Marlins on Sunday. Phillips also delivered the decisive run-scoring single in the 10th that gave Atlanta an 8-7 victory over Miami on Saturday. The Braves took a 4-2 lead with four runs in the 7th. Nick Marcakis uh, had a tie-breaking two-run single down the third base line, and uh, Braves get it done two games in a row. Uh, left fielder Matt Kemp made his first start since restraining since training his left hamstring on Wednesday. He appeared as a pinch hitter on Saturday. Um, Brandon Phillips became, one more note on Brandon Phillips. Brandon Phillips became the first Atlanta player to drive in winning runs with game-ending hits on consecutive days in almost 30 years. Ozzie Virgil accomplished a feat on September 18, 1988, the year I graduated high school, against the Padres and the Giants respectively. The Braves have won 11 games in their last at bat, most in the majors. That's interesting. Braves really struggling record-wise, uh, struggling with their pitching, um, struggling with a lot of different things, but they've uh, won more games uh, in their last at bat in the majors this year. That's a pretty good sign. Uh, Atlanta's 10-game homestand continues with the first of four games against the Giants. Right-handed pitcher R.A. Dickey uh, gave up seven runs, six earned in the first start of the season against San Francisco, a 7-1-1 uh, to one loss on May 28th. Uh, so the Giants coming to town. Braves got this long homestand. I got to remember to tell the old lady to look on Groupon and see if she can find me some damn tickets. <laughs> you ever notice, man, when when your your money looking kind of strange? How you use different platforms like Groupon and Five Dollar Tuesday. <laughs> You ever notice that? Something else I've noticed, noticed too in these last four years is where I go into a little convenience store and wouldn't contemplate even getting a scratch-off ticket. It's not a time that I go into a convenience store and not buy a scratch-off ticket. <laughs> oh, Lord, please let me match these numbers, Lord, please. I need it, Lord. Shut up! Yeah, yeah. Ooh, it's not a time that I'm walking there and not get a, strack, a, a scratch off ticket or two. Right. <sighs> Mo, I got a friend, and you're listening to the Doug Stewart Show. One of the brothers, as a matter of fact, 
this guy with a straight face, and I'm not going to call his name because he's an older cat, but with a straight face, this man said to me a couple of weeks ago, we were sitting down drinking a beer, that he's won over $250,000 of scratch-offs. I was like, bruh, I would have heard about that. He's like, no, I have. Over the years, I've won over $250,000 of scratch-offs. Are you kidding me? I have never won more than $5 in a damn scratch-off. And Ninja, you've won over $250,000 of scratch-offs? What is the scratch-off success secret? <laughs> All right. Uh, how? How? How do you, what's the secret to picking winning scratch-offs? Because I really do need it. <laughs> I'm not going to get into details. Y'all kind of got an idea, but I really do need it. Uh, from KC, the less money a ninja makes, the more lotto tickets they buy. <laughs> Shaking my damn head. That's true. And it should be the other way around. Like, really, I shouldn't be spending an extra dollar or two on a scratch off. I shouldn't be. But what we're hoping for is a big payday. And I guess that's the mindset of the whole thing. From JY3 all the time, Doug. Do something strange for some change. From LD, come on, Doug, with the screaming, nah. Uh, what else we got here? From uh, Jam 2, the Braves will not be big winners until they acquire some more players like Brandon Phillips. I hear what you're saying. From Clay Ball, LeBron Davis. So nobody watched the Tupac movie? I think a couple people have mentioned that they've seen the Tupac movie. And uh, for the most part, from uh, the people in the chat, and that are listening to the show, uh, I'm getting kind of uh, good reviews. Uh, but then I see other places on social media, people saying that it's horrible. So we'll see. I heard that the guy playing Tupac does a very good job. Uh, but the rest of the movie is very low budget. But I will see it tomorrow for $5 Tuesday. I will. And I'll report back to you on Wednesday. Uh, LD, Pops from the D. Come on, Doug, with the screaming nah. I think I already read that. From Team Broadcasting, Groupon has an ad campaign out. Uh, they will say, let us save you $100 a week. It was fine and dandy until I thought about the fact that I had to spend money to save that 100 You sound like my wife. And she always going out and getting a sale when she don't even really need it. If you don't really even need it, uh, how is it a sale? How are you saving money if you're spending money that you weren't uh, intending to spend or that you didn't need to spend? She does that all the time. Oh, it was on sale, but we didn't even need it. So how is it on sale? How are you saving money if we didn't really even need it? Yeah. Damn women. Fail pay says I've won $500 three times on scratch-offs. Doug, the trick is to catch the scratch-off game when they are new. They let the new games hit to try and get people to buy them. Oh! Got you. That makes sense. That makes sense. That that makes sense. James, the big truck driver, location is the secret. Yeah, I've heard that before, how you always hear about these scratch-off winners and these people winning the lottery or whatever when they'll get quick picks. It's always in the little, small, country, bumpkin, little convenience store, you know, out in the woods. And so whenever I go to South Carolina, man, I stop at some of the most obscure Low budget, dirty, <laughs> uh, little convenience stores that I can to get a, a scratch off or whatever. And it's really never helped me at all, to be honest with you. From uh, Mr. Harper, Casey, the numbers of folk that support the lottery is disgusting. It is. And I'm one of those people that, you know, I cringe every time I, I, I go into a, a convenience store and I see people of modest means. Buying twenty dollars worth of scratch offs, I'm like, damn, dude. And they go out and they get into a bucket of a car. I'm like, man, no, I haven't gone that far. I haven't, I haven't gone that far. While a bunch of uh, buy a bunch of scratch offs, I think if I'm gonna win, uh, the good Lord's gonna let me win with buying just one damn ticket. So I've never, even not having a, a job for four years, I've never walked into a convenience store and said, "Give me twenty five damn scratch offs." I've never done that. Uh, I don't believe in that. From uh, Casey, everybody has a secret to winning a lotto, yet they're still working for a dem- <laughs> demand. Uh, Grego says, and ask our Indian brothers which is the good ones, and they will put it for you. Wink and say, good luck, you will win. Mm, whatever, Grego. Let me put a damn check mark by your damn name. <laughs> Indian brothers, what are you talking about? Red dot or feather? 
Oh, I guess he's maybe he's talking about Red Dot. Uh, that's why I put a check mark by your damn name. You're listening to the Doug Stewart Show. Andre Elon, buy your lot of tickets when they put a new roll out. Okay. Okay. That's the second time I've heard that. So what I'm going to do now, the strategy now, is to go in there and just ask the, the person behind the damn register, what's the newest ticket that y'all got out here? What's the newest roll? I guess you can look at it and tell how big the roll of tickets is on the little uh, ticket roll and then do it like that. From kicking it with Kesey, yes, sir. The best place to buy one. Them country areas be breaking fools off, but we need to put Vern in them scratch off anonymous mix too. <laughs> what Vern is an habitual scratch off buyer. I can see that. I can see that. Uncle Vern spending half his damn check on scratch offs. Come on, Vern. You need help, bro. From Felpay, we have always heard about the city of Atlanta opening casino downtown every year. Is that issue ever going to happen? Nah, I don't think it's going to happen. They had uh, a conversation about that a while back, and people are fighting it. There's all this rhetoric out there about, you know, when casinos come to town and uh, undesirables, you know, just triple uh, in the city, and people go through all of these uh, issues in their lives with drugs and alcohol. Like it, it's all of this negative press out there about bringing a, a casino to Atlanta. For the longest time, they had been talking about, I'm not sure the status of it right now, for the longest time, they had been talking about putting a casino in underground, which I think would be perfect. I mean, <laughs> underground, really. I haven't been to underground Atlanta. I know in 10 years. I know it. And I don't even know if it's still flourishing or. Uh, do, do they even have restaurants down there that had a, a cool little food court down there and a bunch of shops and whatnot? I haven't been underground in I know 10 years. But when I first moved to Atlanta, man, underground was popping. What's that little place that used to sell the frozen drinks? Um, somebody will tell me in the chat room. But on Friday night, the underground in Atlanta? And if you've never been to it, and if you're not from Atlanta, it literally is underground. It's literally underground, downtown ATL. Huge space, huge space, and um, that used to be the place to be, man. On Friday night, back in the mid '90s, and um, I haven't been down there in a long, long time, long, long time. From Sam, man, we got undesirables already in Atlanta. Plenty of them, right? Uh, we do, we do. From KC, my FSU statistics professor allows us to pick lottery numbers every Friday, and if anyone had the Florida lottery number, they would get an automatic A. Oh, okay. That's an interesting little uh, uh, thing right there. Yeah. You remember in The Wire? Back to The Wire again, I know. In the season with the little boys? Uh, season, was that three or four? I think it was season four. And uh, Prez Maluski was teaching stats in his class, and he based it all around dice. <laughs> and Randy went on the corner and won all of his money. Using uh, his, uh, his statistics that he learned in Pres Belusky's class. You talk about it had a hard way to go. That damn Randy had a hard way to go. But Randy was a snitch. Yeah. I had forgot how much of a real snitch Randy was. Randy would throw your ass under the bus to save him. <laughs> oh man he just spill his guts damn that's a great show alright just like that three hours is going by uh, very fast when we get back man more of your chat messages we'll wrap up today's show Stew style don't go away keep it locked right here the Doug Stewart show